Hi guys, welcome to Outdoor Finders. In this channel, we look at outdoor related products, if you love outdoor activities such as camping or hiking, you will love our videos. Our team spent countless hours researching and testing to present you with the best ones. We also included links in the description for each product mentioned. So be sure to check out the description for the best price and value. Okay, let's come to the video. The Fluid Bike Trainer Stand from Alpcore seamlessly turns the bicycle you already own into a stationary machine, making your cycling routine convenient, cost-effective, portable, durable, and weatherproof. You attach the stand by first replacing your bike's rear wheel quick release with the equipped skewer. Loosen the tensioning knob, lock the ring, and put the unit roller on. Lock the bike to the trainer by turning the tensioning knob until the wheel's center resistance is firm. Tighten the lock ring until the bike is firmly fastened in at the skewer. Adjust the knob to make sure the resistance unit is properly touching the rear wheel, not too tight, so you avoid tire and unit damage. And don't forget to place the unit hook under the front tire of your bike. When you want to detach the bike from the stand, just loosen the tensioning knob and lock the ring. Hold the bike so it doesn't fall over and remove the riser block. Your bike is now free. A few things to keep in mind. Never use the trainer on uneven surfaces. Avoid sudden braking. Don't touch the wheels when they're in motion. Don't release the handlebars while riding. Make sure the tires are always inflated and keep children and pets away when the bicycle is in use. When you're done with the stand, fold it up and put it away or place it in the sturdy carry bag that's included. Traverse for miles and scale mountains, all from the comfort of wherever.
Hi, I'm Brian Tarani, Category Manager for Trainers here at Saris. I'm in Madison, Wisconsin today to show you the new H3 trainer. We're going to get it out of the box, put a cassette on it, and then get a bike onto the trainer and we'll be ready to ride. So obviously I've taken the trainer out of the box already. So let's go over what's included in the box with the trainer. You'll be getting a power supply. Uh, this obviously plugs into the wall and then plugs into the trainer. The power supply, if you bought it internationally, will also include adapters for various outlets. There's a bag of end caps to go onto the trainer. Out of the box, uh, these end caps are for 130 quick release bikes, your basic standard rim brake road bike. In the bag will be 135 quick release. That would be a quick release disc brake road bike. There's also 142 spacer end caps. That would be for older mountain bikes or disc brake road bikes with through axles and all the way up to a boost 148 axle, which would be most modern mountain bikes. Also included, of course, is the user manual. If there's something in the video that still isn't clear, Check out the user manual for more details and make sure to read that for safety information before riding. Also included, but tucked away underneath the trainer, is a front wheel stabilizing block. It's just tucked underneath one of the legs on the trainer. This goes underneath your front wheel uh, just to kind of keep things straight and even while you're riding. But also included on the back side of that block is a brake block. So if you have a disc brake bike, you can put this into the rear brake caliper while you're riding and then you don't have to worry about compressing the brakes accidentally while you're having a hard interval. So the trainer comes, as I mentioned, with the end caps for a 130 road bike quick release style. It also comes with a free hub body that will accept multiple cassettes. It's SRAM and Shimano compatible. You can fit from an 8 to an 11 speed cassette on this free hub. Uh, for 11 speed cassettes, just remove the black spacer that's held on by a rubber band here. Uh, all other cassettes, just remove the rubber band and you can install those. Uh, interestingly, if you have an 11 speed Campagnolo bike, the Campy 11 speed matches well with SRAM and Shimano cassettes. So you could use a SRAM or Shimano cassette with your 11-speed campy bike. Also, if you have a new uh, drivetrain that accepts a XD or XDR driver, we do have an XD XDR driver accessory available on the website for purchase. Uh, this will be for most modern mountain bike drivetrains as well as uh, SRAM ETAP Axis, uh, which is a 12-speed Grupo. So that's what's included in the box. Now let's talk about getting that cassette on. So it's a really simple procedure. We'll walk through how it's going to be done. You'll need a few things. Obviously, you're going to need a cassette of your choice. And again, we don't include the cassette because we realize everybody wants to run a different gear ratio or different speeds. So I've got an 11 speed Shimano 105 here. Uh, you'll need a chain whip and there's a couple varieties out there. Uh, this one is a sort of player style. This is a more traditional style chain whip and a lock ring tool. Uh, in this case, the lock ring tool, we can fit uh, into the back of this chain whip to turn it. If you don't have one of those tools, just an adjustable wrench will also do the trick. So I've got everything I need to get the cassette onto the trainer, so let's get started. All right, so now we're ready to install the cassette. As I mentioned earlier, the free hub that comes on the H3 is for SRAM and Shimano cassettes. You can put an eight to 11 speed on this. If you need an XD or XD driver, it's a simple switch with this accessory that's available online. You just remove this end cap. You might need a five millimeter allen to get that off if it's not already loose. Uh, and the free hub simply slides on. You put your XD driver on. The installation of the cassette is gonna be very similar. So for this 11 speed Shimano cassette that we're gonna put on, that means I have to take off the 8 to 10 speed spacer. So pull off that rubber band and the included spacer. And now we're ready to put the cassette on with the tools we mentioned earlier. So the 11 speed cassette that I have here, uh, some of the cogs are pinned together. So you'll be able to slide those on in groups. And what I'm doing is I'm just finding the narrow spline that's on the free hub. So that only fits on in one orientation. If you haven't installed a cassette before, you'll notice that it's asymmetric on the inside of the cogs. So you're just lining up the narrow spline to the narrow notch and it slides right on. So the rest of these cogs are going to be individual with plastic spacers in the middle. So we just keep going on one by one in the direction that they were shipped in the box. You can also remove a cassette from your bicycle, uh, and then you know it's gonna be compatible with your drivetrain. Uh, so that would be another technique if you don't wanna go out and purchase a new cassette. You could just take the existing cassette off the bike you intend to ride with, uh, and that'll save you a, a few dollars at the bike shop. Uh, if this is something that seems a little intimidating to you, or you don't wanna purchase the tools uh, to do this, that's fine as well. You can take this to your local bike shop and ask them to install a cassette on here. They'll have the tools uh, to be able to help you out and 
get all of the cogs on. They'll also be able to help determine which cassette you'll need. Uh, if you're not familiar with what you're already running on your bike, that's fine. Uh, you can just take it into your local shop and they'll be able to help you out. So we've got the last cog going on here, getting it lined up just so. So the last piece going on is the lock ring. So the lock ring simply threads onto grooves inside of the free hub. And I can just get that started by hand. Now we use the lock ring tool to start tightening it down. And you can get it thumb tight, but you can see as you start to turn, it's not, you're not going to have enough strength to just power that on. So this is where the chain whip tool comes in. And again, I'm using the plier style chain whip tool. And then an open-ended adjustable wrench. You could also use the backside of a chain whip to do the same task. And we're just going to tighten in. There we go, our lock ring. Now the cassette is installed, and we can start putting a bike on to the H3. Our cassette's installed onto the H3, so we're ready to prep it for getting the bike on and getting a training session in. So as I mentioned, uh, 130 quick release end caps are already on the H3 out of the box. The bike I'm going to put on has a 142 through axle, so I'm going to remove these end caps. It just takes a five millimeter Allen, uh, just insert it in there and you can turn the end caps off on each side. And again, on the non-drive side. And then in the bag of accessories, we had end caps for through axles. So this will take the medium length through axle and the short through axle. The short side is the drive side. Just get those on hand tight on both sides and then snug them down with a wrench. An adjustable wrench or a cone wrench will work just fine. Uh, just to about hand tight to make sure those are on and the bike is not going to move around and that there's the correct spacing. Our end caps are on now, so again, remember there is a wheel block tucked away underneath the legs of the H3. We'll get both legs out, and we're going to take the disc brake block out and set that aside for later. Now, if you have the trainer set up on an uneven surface and it's moving around a little bit, there are adjustable feet on each side. You can just unscrew those to make sure it's level and then twist the lock rings back into place to hold the foot securely on that uneven surface and you'll be ready to get the bike on there. So I'll grab the bike and we'll put that on. All right, so I've got the bike that I want to put onto the H3. I've taken the wheel off and whether you're using a through axle like this bike or quick release, you'll just be reusing that quick release or through axle again onto the H3. Uh, so from the front wheel block, we set aside our disc brake block. And the reason we have that is that that fits into these brake calipers so that uh, once you have everything settled on there, you don't accidentally squeeze the brake pads together. Another thing that I've done to prep this bike for getting it onto the trainer is shifting into the smallest cog position. So if it's the railer is up in a larger position, it'll be more difficult to put onto the cassette and trainer. So we just shift it all the way down into that 11 tooth sprocket. So this is very similar to just putting your bike wheel back on. Simply slide it over and on. And then once everything's lined up, grab your through axle or quick release. Put it through just as you would for installing your wheel. Get that snug down, just like installing the wheel once again. And once everything is tight, Get the bike set, grab your front wheel block and set it under the front wheel. So the bike's on the trainer and we're ready to ride. Just grab the power supply from the box and plug it into the H3 and then you'll be ready to connect to your favorite training app. If you have any other questions about what we didn't cover today or if you want to see some other instructional videos, go to saris.com. Thanks again and have a great ride. Decades of technological innovation. Five evolutions of smart trainers. From this was born an entirely new indoor training experience. The same industry leading engineers who ushered in the origin of smart trainers have joined forces once again to shape the ultimate indoor riding experience. One that sacrificed nothing and is as fulfilling for the weekend warrior as it is for the podium seeking pro.
revolutionary bike compatibility gives any rider the freedom to hammer out any workout from the saddle of their preferred bike for years to come. Compatible with virtually any smart device and training application out there. The retractable legs allow for easy setup wherever you have the space. Simply remove the rear wheel, mount the rear fork, and prepare to sweat. Then, at the touch of a button, you can fold up the legs and have your room back. Measured at 64 decibels at 20 miles per hour, the Hammer is the quietest flywheel-based direct drive smart trainer available. Innovative resistance technology provides lightning fast reactions to any changes in the virtual road and ensures maximum power. Capable of taking up to a 2,000 watt beating at 20 miles per hour, the Hammer can handle the strongest riders and simulate 20% grades. At the core of the Hammer is its massive 20 pound flywheel, pedal and the flywheel spins to replicate your outside ride in a way that is indescribable. The cool air intake and temperature compensation sensor keeps the hammer cool and accurate while you hammer on. The hammer will redefine how you view indoor training. Are you ready? Coming soon in 2016.